Hi, I'm Mats and this is Not Enough Tech and today we continue with ESP8266 uh, DAY Smart Socket. Um, this video is slightly delayed obviously because I've run into some software problems. I've been doing this for like two or three days straight and trying to figure out everything. However, the good news is it resulted in some added functionality and I'm gonna show you now Toggles, schedules, schedule override, uh, notifications, uh, integration with Tasker, web interface, and all the good. So uh, let's start a very tiny showcase before we jump into the code. If you need any additional information about this setup, check out the uh, link in the description to the article. It will be a file to download and everything. So let's get started. Right, as you can see, I've got web interface on and I've got my mobile interface on as well. And uh, first, let's go quickly over the interface. So you can see ESP web status, so it's here. And this is uh, green if it's working, red if it's not working. Socket's currently off. And we have auto schedule, which is pre-selected schedule uh, right now running around this, uh, an hour around uh, sunset and an hour around sunrise, uh, just for the working hours and stuff like that. But that can be overridden from the menus in here or set to automatic uh, again through the bottom. So let's uh, turn the socket on and see what happens. As you can see, I'm gonna get a quick notification. I can turn off the socket directly from the notif notification from uh, Tasker and everything is updated there. I also have a toggle. So this toggle can turn off the, um, this is this uh, yellow bulb, can turn off right now the um, socket. Or well, I can set the schedule. So let's uh, take a look at the schedule. So uh, the socket is on, so let's make sure it's, the socket's gonna be off. So let's set it for like a night, and uh, let's set it for night as well. And as you can see, the time in here on the web interface has been updated, the notification is gone, and the socket currently is off. So that's great. Now let's reset all to default. So uh, let's uh, disable all the override, all overrides. Overrides are gone, everything's uh, off right now. And if I want, I can just turn the socket on from here. And the socket is on. I've used uh, Arduino IDE to program ESP8266. Uh, and uh, this is the code. The code isn't very complicated, about 100 lines. And you can use it as is. Um, obviously, you will have to modify some of the settings. So let's go over the settings. Obviously, your Wi-Fi connection password in here, and that's pretty obvious. Now, this is the M. Uh, this is the Node Red server, uh, which you have to fill in and complete it. Uh, another thing, you can leave all the topics as they are because they integrated into the um, Node Red itself. So uh, leave it as it is. If you modify it, you have to modify other files as well. Uh, now, another thing is uh, you have to set the ESP name. If you use multiple ESPs with MQTT protocol, the name has to be unique. And because I'm using RX pin for this, uh, this is the pin three. If you decide to use a different pin, obviously change this as well. So this is some setup for the, um, the pop-up client. Um, it basically will hold the messages uh, from your, uh, that's gonna be posted to your topics. And we're starting by setting up the pin into a uh, output mode uh, because by default you're gonna have the serial on it. Now there are I've disabled the serial because serial will mess up with your output. Uh, you can start a serial and uh, for troubleshooting uh, if you if you wish so. But the code is working fine. I left uh, all the serial prints for you, but because I don't want any uh, um, output on uh, my pin, the serial pin. I've just ended the serial here and I don't get any printouts at all. I left it for your discretion. So when you connect it for the first time, uh, just uh, you can see what's going on in here. So this is uh, all you. Uh, this is all the setup, setting up the Wi-Fi, etc. until it's uh, connected. And then we're gonna start uh, get into the function itself. So this is your callback. Callback is what happens when we post something to a topic which is supposed to uh, operate the relay. Now this is here. Yeah, this is the topic we subscribe to, which is a uh, client subscribe and a uh, topic is topic status. So this is where we're posting our command. So if I want relay to go 
offline or online and that's directed by one or zero and this is the first character you can see in payload of the payload so the message we're sending and this is the first char character so if the first character of the payload is one uh, we're doing this if the first character is zero we're doing this so what we're doing here we changing uh, the pin um, value to high or low or one to or zero and then we public the same message uh, to the topic topic current state so that's going to be later used to determine what is the current state of the relay now that's when the message is received by uh, esp itself uh, and we have our uh, reconnect so if we get reconnect uh, disconnected obviously we want to reconnect to the same topics and subscribe to the same uh, topic as well so we're going to publish that we are online if we're not online we're going to publish esp will which is set to offline and that's going to be in a topic well and uh, once we connect it obviously we're going to make sure we subscribe it to uh, subscribe to topic uh, status now and the, our main loop is basically just to loop unless uh, you disconnect and you do the reconnect and every i've said it every 10 seconds uh just to post a message that you are online uh, to the topic internet which is uh, which handling our status now let's uh we've got the arduino code obviously you can download it from the, um, the description let's jump into the node red itself right i know this looks scary but it really isn't first of all this is online interface and scheduling this is also part of online interface uh and this so uh rest of it is basically what you need uh let's take a look in details how it works um, let's start with this. This is online status. So when uh, ESP gets connected to MQTT, it posts to the ESP network uh, that is online. That online message is translated here to either to green if it's online or red if it's offline. And then the button, which is ESP status, visible in a dashboard. Let's jump into the dashboard. It's updated. So this is red or green when it's uh, offline or online. That's it. That's what. That's all it does. Now the current state is uh, also when we uh, toggle the ESP on and off. Uh, basically, this is translated from one or zero to on and off, and posted as a text. And this text is visible here. So this is give you this uh, status update of the socket itself. Now we also have the switch. The switch itself. It's a separate. Uh, if you've got an idea how I can make it dynamically update so it would reflect collect position according to this message let me know because i didn't figure out that out but it's not a big problem it works sometimes you just have to toggle it off and on again and that directly updates uh, the uh, mqtt asp relay which basically tells the relay to turn on and off based on one or zero value uh, you can see this is also connected to uh the notification that goes directly to my uh, tasker profile more on this later uh the socket itself uh it's connected to alexa it's named socket so if i say alexa turn on the socket the socket command what uh, will be issued and the message true or false will be sent to socket control and change into a binary function so one and zeros and then it's gonna do the rest. So it turn on uh, turn on the socket via MQTT and issue the command to the uh, pixel itself. Now the same happens when I send the post request, and I'm sending it to ESP post, and it's just I need to extract the values. So I'm sending it as a, as a light uh, equals one, and depending whether it's a true or false, uh, that's been interpreted by the uh, change node into one or zeros and set it passed over so that's how it works there is just mandatory response node to remember and that's basic controls of the socket now if you're not interested in interface at all but you want to have automatic scheduling uh, take a look at the big timer nodes so those timer nodes had to be initially uh, implemented in from the palette so i've imported them and they are somewhere here going here big timer so um there are many of options and few outputs that you have to remember my default is from sunrise to nine with the offset and another one 
uh, is from dusk till 11.30 with a small offset as well to start before dusk. So because the light is near the hole. Now there are three inputs and I'm using the one off message. That one off message is being sent when the timer is true. And then another one off message is sent when the timer is no longer true. Now these messages are zero or ones and sent just once. If you connect to the middle one, the output is every minute. So uh, make sure you connect it to the correct value, otherwise you will get into some errors. And if the automated timer triggers the switch, I also update my picks. Now the rest of this is the schedule and the real web interface. So there are a few things that happens. If you go to the interface, you'll notice you can set the schedules. Now you type in your value and then press set, type in your off value, press set. What happened is, these are uh, buttons responsible for this. First of all, when you type in your value, which is here, you write this value to a file and overwrite it. So it doesn't do anything until you press set. When you press set, the number from that file, from the time on and time off file, depending on which button is pressed, so this is here, uh, it's being uh, read and uh, put into a, a payload and that payload updates the um, this field here, which basically tells you uh, what is the current schedule currently is on auto. Uh, so um, this is because uh, that sets them to auto. Now, when we set uh, when we reset this, what happened is the value gets overwritten with auto, so they not trigger anything, and uh, basically this uh, timer will apply to your ESP socket. Now, if you notice also when you press set, these messages are being set uh, to the nodes. And in order to set them programmatically, what you have to do is change this payload into a specific format. So it needs on override space and then your value in time or off override uh, for timer off. And this is how you control a programmatically overridden timer for this. That this is a manual override, so by pressing a default, you can always go back to the default button on uh, sets uh, the default message or auto message. You can use either auto or default. Uh, I've used auto uh, to reset these timers and reset the message which is stored in the files each time the files are being overridden. Now you can do so also using a post um, requests and these requests are sent from Tasker or other devices. Now a posting one to time or ESP time on and posting a second one to ESP time off. Now these commas are pairs of like a JSON value so it's a pair of values and one is stored in time on, the other one is stored in time off. And obviously I need to convert this into a payload. So this is a function for this to convert this into a payload. And then I'm adding the uh, prefixes to make them work with a big timer. And that's pretty much the setup for the node. Let's take a look what I've done in Tasker. First of all, you need to set the server. I've put the server into var value, variable value, so you don't have to concern yourself with what I've got in there, uh, but that will uh, set the IP in the port of your node. So that's the internal IP. If you use DNS, just use the uh, DNS and then port number. You have to open this port on the router for this to work externally outside of your Wi-Fi. Now we're gonna start with uh, maybe with toggle. Toggle, what happened is it's uh, displaying a dialogue message this dialog message has some conditions. I'm gonna tell you why it has a if condition in a moment. In this dialog, I'm using two pictures and based on what picture I'm pressing on, there are two things that will happen. First of all, if I press on toggle, it will just send the server a post uh, with the information uh, which is light equals to ESP socket value. That ESP socket value is updated constantly when the socket value changes either from the system. So there is a message sent to update this. So whatever happens, Tasker always know providing it's connected that the value has changed. Now, if I press the second uh, button, 
Then I'll open the dialog with uh, schedules. So I can pick the timer on and the timer off. And values picked are being assigned and posted uh, via post HTTP to my server, to ESP time on, and they are stored as a time on and then value and time off and then value. So that's basically how this toggle works. Now, because I have a notification, I'm using a perfect notification setup. So if you um, if you don't have a perfect notification, you have to create your notification yourself. Otherwise, I'll just provide you with a string to enter in my tutorial, written tutorial. So what happens is when I receive, uh, let's go to the profiles, when I receive a ESP smart notification via auto remote from uh, the node red, which is here. Uh, I basically run this task and there are two uh, different options I can receive. I can either receive the message that ends with turn on or turn off. If the message ends with turn on, I'm going to set the ESP socket value to zero because next time I want to press it, I want to make sure the toggle will turn it off. So it works opposite way. And they're going to create the notification which you see previously with a button to turn it off. Now, if I'm going to receive the message with turn off, it means I have to cancel the existing notification that was already there, set the value of ESP socket to opposite, which is one, and then perform the ESP toggle task with a parameter uh, one set to end. Now I'm setting this because otherwise, if you notice, if I just gonna do the perform task on its own, what it does is gonna trigger everything. And I only want to trigger this. So whenever value parameter one equals to end, it will just do this and it will ignore this because it doesn't meet the condition and it will ignore this because uh, this uh, value is being set to something else. Lastly, I want to talk about commands. When I've got the notification, let me just trigger the notification for the sake of it. So notification is going to pop in in a second. I've got the notification on, excellent. When I turn off this, what's going to happen is we're going to go to circuit notifications and this three task theoretically would apply. However, only notification that has a and message uh, in if condition will get performed. So those two will get performed. And this one's going to wait for the auto remote message uh, to comply. So once everything went through and the relay got disabled, uh, I get auto remote uh, notification telling me to set the socket value to opposite uh, value. So when I next time go to my ESP toggle, obviously it's going to work well for you and uh, it's going to turn on the um, socket. Well, right now this socket is off, so let's turn it on. And the socket is on. Excellent. I know that was slightly brief and quick. However, in the description of this video, you're going to find, obviously, the full article. You're going to find files to download on ESP, Tasker, and uh, the uh, node red itself so do check it out thanks so much for watching guys do follow me on social media or follow me on youtube if you're not uh, following me already and if you want access to these videos and files and everything early check my patreon page it's what pays the server bills anyway thanks and i'm gonna see you next time so until then bye thanks so much for watching guys as usually as usually as usual